Hey what's up guys, welcome to Gabriel Gaprod. Today we are going to see the steps I took to achieve something like this. Where we have a character slashing around with his sword and leaving that nice slash effect behind. It really adds a nice touch to the sword attacks and I think the end result is pretty good. So I will show you how the slash shader was made as well as what else I used to make this happen. By the way, this project is available on my Patreon page. I even included a few more slashes and the links in the description in case you are interested. So with that being said, let's see how we can do this. Alright, so the first thing I needed was a character and I decided to reuse the one from this tutorial that I made, the using effects with characters tutorial. It covers very well how I set up the character movement and the camera as well. And if you are interested to recreate this setup, the link's in the description in case you wanna check that out. I just needed to download a few more sword animations and I was good to go to the next step. Which was starting with the slash shader since it's the centerpiece of this video. So it was time to move on to shader graph, where I started with a lit graph, set it to transparent and with two sided on. Then I added the color property in HDR mode and also added a texture for the main texture. And I made this shader in a way that won't require any skill to draw textures, in fact the main texture is going to be a very simple gradient. So I went to Photoshop where I only needed to pick this gradient tool, choose the black to white gradient and then I create an horizontal gradient like this one. To save some space I even cropped it to be only 6 pixels tall, which is more than enough. Then I saved this as a PNG to Unity and assigned it to my main texture. Although there's still one texture that I was going to need, and it's a mask texture that will work as a filter, in a way that all pixels that are above black will be visible. So I went back to Photoshop and instead of being an horizontal gradient, I only need to create a diagonal one. But I wanted to have some smooth edges around my mesh, so I selected everything, pressed right click and choose transform selection. So I could proportionally shrink my selection, to more or less around here. And then all I needed was to feather the selection around 25 pixels. Select the inverse with Ctrl I and finally delete it. Awesome, but there's still one thing missing. The transparent background will be considered white. And the way the shader is made, it will consider white as the visible area. So I only needed to create a new layer below this one that was going to be all black. Great, I saved it as a PNG and assigned it to the mask property. Alright, so I started by dragging all of these properties to around here and the first thing I did was multiply the main texture with the color. But since I also want to control the color with the particle system, I needed to multiply this with a vertex color. And then connect this to the color input. Ok, so I wanted to test this out, but not with a billboard or with a quad, so I went to Blender and created a proper slash mesh, which starts with a circle of around 32 vertices, which then I needed to extrude and scale it down to form this donut flat mesh. Now the trick is how this mesh is going to be unwrapped, and instead of wrapping it just like this, I needed to make it square, so in order to do it I had to select everything and use the light map pack which will put everything in squares. Now with an active face selected, I can choose follow active quad, which will transform the UV into a rectangle. And this is great because now in the UV window all I needed to do was to first pack Islands and then turn on constraint to image boundaries. So I could push this up without passing the boundaries and I also made sure it was touching the boundaries below. 
With that being done, I renamed the mesh and exported as an FBX with these settings to Unity. Now back in Unity, all I needed to do was to create an empty game object, so I could attach a particle system that is going to hold the mesh and the shader I created. So I did a few minor adjustments to the particle system, like a very short lifetime, no speed, emit only one particle, and no shape model. With these minor adjustments, I then went on and assigned the mesh, which I needed to increase the scale factor to 100, otherwise it would be too small. Then I created a material out of the slash shader and also assigned it to the particle system. Once I arrived at this point, I was able to see how the shader was behaving, and it was as I expected, only a black and white gradient, that could have color and with no transparency, but at least we're working well on the mesh. Because the white will represent the brightest part of the slash until it fades to black. So in order to make this more interesting, I needed a Voronoi node. There are other noises, but this one looks pretty cool. I then multiplied this with the main texture, the gradient. And since this was too static, I created a time node that will be multiplied with the Voronoi speed, a vector one, and I also created another vector one for the Voronoi scale. I connected them like this, and now I also needed a way to dissolve it, to dissolve this. So I went on and created a power node, that recreates the effect very well. I replaced this connection to the color multiply and went on to Unity to test this out. As I started playing with the power node in the inspector, the result became clear and it was exactly how I pretended to be, to create a dissolve effect. However, I still had all the black left behind and the mask wasn't doing anything yet. So back to shader graph, I solved this by multiplying the mask texture with the output of the power node, but I also wanted to control the transparency with the particle system, so I multiplied this with a vertex color. And then finally connected to the alpha input and made sure the alpha clip threshold was at zero. I went back to Unity and immediately noticed that the alpha was working well, the dissolve, the scale and the color were behaving nicely as well. But in this case, in this specific case, I want to control all of this, the speed, the scale, the dissolve, the amount and even the color intensity with the particle system. And that could be done by turning on the custom data and the custom vertex streams. And in order to use the custom data and the custom vertex streams, in shader graph I needed a UV node, which if I split this node, I was able to attribute the R channel to the power node, which controls the dissolve amount, the G channel to control the color intensity by multiplying it like this, the B channel to control the Voronoi speed and the alpha channel to control the Voronoi scale. Four variables, four properties, the perfect fit, which also allowed me to remove the four properties in the inspector since now they are going to be controlled in the particle system. In the slash particle system I removed the normal stream and added the UV tool and custom1.xyzw, which represents the RGBNA from the UV node. Now, in custom data, I can select vector, and since the Y represents the G, it means I can control the color intensity. The X, which is the R channel, allows me to control the dissolve amount, the power node, basically. 
which if used with a curve will create this nice fade out of the slash, which is pretty cool. So the W controls the scale of the Voronoi and the Z is to control the speed of the Voronoi. And when I arrived at this point, I had a pretty good looking slash that I only need to make a few improvements visually. So I made a few more tweaks to the dissolving part, made sure it dissolved well. I also added a color gradient for example and then even added some black colors with another slash to improve the contrast of this effect. I was pleased with the result and decided to create a few more variations as well. Now to use this with my character I created a script that would basically let me choose the attack from 1 to 4 and activate the respective attack animation. Each attack animation will spawn a respective slash that I assign at the inspector with a certain delay so it fits the animation. Then I only needed to instantiate the slash at the sword position and with the sword rotation. And this is the end result. So at this point I was very pleased with the result of the slash and the project in general as well. And I think it came out pretty good actually. For those who wanna check out how to create trails for your weapons, I made this tutorial a few months ago that shows you how you can create some pretty cool trails, in case you're interested. So I really hope you enjoyed this video and in case you wanna support me, you will not be disappointed there are many packages and effects that you can use in my Patreon. And I appreciate all the patrons that have been supporting me. I just wanna say a special thanks to my super mega patrons, which are Alex Dixon, Facundo Perez Botti, Goblin Black, James Finlay, Jens Anderson, Joseph Feldman, Juan Mediola, Michael Lepard, Shamsua Booker, Tirita, Warden Studios, and Yayoni. And I'm sorry if I pronounced any of your names wrong. You guys are awesome and your support is very important, so thank you. Thanks everyone for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.